This is the sixth video in the 10 part login to Firebase with SwiftUI playlist series. We're now ready to start work on our authentication process. The first thing our app needs to do when it launches is check Firebase to see if you are currently authenticated. Now, as I mentioned in the overview of this playlist, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on how Firebase authentication works or how to create documents in Firestore. There are lots of detailed tutorials and references on that. What I'm focusing on is how to implement it in a SwiftUI project, and this is how I do it. I like to have reusable code, so in all of my projects that require a Firebase Firestore login with email and or sign in with Apple, I use the same code. The only thing that changes is the design. What I'm going to show you over the next few videos is always the same. I encourage you to pause, rewind, and repeat often until you understand the flow. Although it's not required, the more you understand how things work, the better you'll be able to customize and debug. So I'm going to take it slow with some pauses to let things sink in. Most of what you find here can be credited to Alex Nagy, who goes by the moniker Rebelloper. He has some great YouTube videos, and the one that inspired this series is this one. I'll leave a link in the notes below. I've modified most of the files as I dug through them so that the flow makes more sense to me and so I could explain the process in this series. Download and unzip the files for this video from the link provided in the notes below. Copy the four files from the Firestore folder into the Firestore group. And then the two from the auth folder to the auth group. The final structure for this course should now look something like this. What I want to do now is implement the process and while doing so, explain what each of the different files and structures accomplish and in doing so, hope that you'll be able to follow along and incorporate in your own projects. At the end, you could probably use the completed project as a starter project for your future ones and just change the Google service infoplist file with your own and update the Apple email source field we discussed in the previous video. Inside our Firestore group, there is the FB user file, and this is the model for our Firebase user. When an account is created, either by email or sign in with Apple, we want to capture the Firebase UID, the name, and the email. You may also wish to initialize some additional properties as well when your account is created, so you can add those in here as well. Even though this is a struct, I've created a memberwise initializer here because I have an extension with a failable initializer. What follows is an extension that will create a dictionary of all of the keys and values when the instance is created, and we'll see this in operation shortly. Namespacing in Swift has become one of the most useful things a developer can use to make code more structured and clear and allows us to not have to break our brain every time we want to give a name to something that might collide with another. I'm going to jump to the FB keys file by control command clicking on the FB keys to find where it was defined. To create a namespace, we can use an enum, a struct, or even a class. And I choose to use an enum since it doesn't have an init method that would prompt me to create an instance of it. The FB keys enum namespace gives me access to constants that reflect the path and field names for our Firebase collection. The collection name is users, and the user enum lists the names of the three fields. Jumping back to FB user, we see that we use these keys when creating our dictionary. The FB Firestore enum is another namespace file. In this file, I have created functions that will allow me to retrieve the user once authenticated so that I will be able to inject it into the environment. Before this can happen, of course, we need to be able to create the user, and that's exactly what the merge FB user function will do, and we'll explore this in a minute. Each of these functions has a completion handler that has a result argument. The retrieve FB user will provide me with an FB user, while the merge function will provide a Boolean true when the user logs in. In both cases, if there's an error, 
the result is an error. We want to be able to deal with these errors in our UI, so it will be important to know what the error is. When saving to Cloud Firestore, possible Firestore errors are found in this enum. And I've extended the enum to provide an error description so that I can always use dot localized description to get meaningful string results. And we'll show how this works shortly. I want to thank John Sondell for this tip, and I'll leave a reference to that article in the notes below. Back in the FB Firestore file, we see how I use this specific type of error in my functions. The getDocuments function result is used by the retrieveFBUser function. The result argument, if a success, is a dictionary that we can use to instantiate our FBUser, and that is where my init that I created in our FBUser comes in. That covers all the files in the Firestore folder. The final two are in the auth folder, and we'll get to those in a later video. So it's time to start coding. The first thing we have to do is add an additional property to the user info class so that when we retrieve our user, we'll be able to add it to our environment. Recall that we have an environment object that currently only knows the authentication state. So we'll add another at publish property called user of type FB user and initialize it with empty strings. We'll also need to import Firebase Auth because we're going to set up our authentication change listener. With that imported, we can create a new optional auth state did change listener handle. Well, now we can update or configure Firebase did change function. When the function is called, we can create our auth state did change listener by using auth.auth dot add state did change listener. The completion handler provides us with an auth and an optional user. We're only concerned here with the user if it isn't nil, so we can use underscore comma user and guard check on user to see if it exists. If not, the user must be signed out, which would make sense in our case because we don't even have a user yet, and then we can return. If we do get a user, however, and we will, we can assume that we are signed in so we can assign that to our is user authenticated property. Now that we're signed in, we can call our retrieve FB user function from our FB Firestore namespace to retrieve the user info from our Firestore database by passing in the user ID, and then we can switch on the result. If the result is a failure, we can print out the localized description of the error. If we're successful, we can assign the user to our user info instance, and because user info is an environment object, the instance will be available to any view that has that environment object. So let's follow that through. When content view appears, it calls the function. And the first time through, there will be no user, so this will apply. And we'll present the login view because we'll be signed out. Let's assume that it found a user. The authentication state changes, plus the user has been assigned. And since this is in my environment object, we have changes. So it triggers a refresh. And now our state being signed in presents the home view. And in home view, we have access to the user info environment object, as I just mentioned, so we can update the text to display the user info dot username. Now there's just one more thing that I want to say here before I leave this video. Our error handling here is pretty weak. In our user info class, when we configure our state did change, all I do is print out the error description. If for some reason your user database collection has been corrupt, your users will never know it and you'll run into problems. You might consider moving this retrieval of the user to when you actually need it within a view where you can actually do something with the error. So I'm going to copy it from here and comment it out. And the first time that we'll need it is in the home view. 
And when it appears, I can check to see if there's a current user based on the authentication. So I'll first import Firebase and then on appear, check for the existence of the current user and assign the user's UID to a UID constant that I can pass into the function. So let me paste that function in now and change the user.uid to our constant UID and set our environment objects user to the successes user. If it's a failure, I now have the error description here and I could present to the user an alert and deal with it accordingly. If we run our app now, since we're not signed in, we'll get the login screen. And there are no errors, so the check for authentication must have succeeded, and we're ready to code our sign up and sign in methods next. Videos for this series are being posted as they're created, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to be notified when new ones are posted, not only for this playlist, but for all of my SwiftUI videos.